All right, so Restoration Church. It was in 2019. We have PowerPoint on the back. It was in 2019 that we had, um, we changed the name of the church. Remember that? We changed the name of the church from North Providence Assembly of God to Restoration Church of Rhode Island. That was a really big deal. Um, we, we tried out the name for, tried out different names for a year. And um, uh, we're still in the Assemblies of God Church, just in case you wanted to know. But the reason why we changed the name to Restoration Church, because we didn't want to be known for where we are. We wanted to be known for who we are. Does that make sense? We wanted to be known for what God does. And when we read the stories all throughout the Old Testament, men and women often came to the place and called the place, the name of the place, based on their own circumstances instead of the goodness of God. We said, let's change the name to Restoration Church because that is what we hear the most. And it came up on my memories last week. Um, you know, on Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, isn't he a nice guy? He sends you a thing saying, in your memories, because we care. Say, thank you, Mark. And so that's, that picture came up, ribbon cutting, right? So some familiar faces in there. Um, uh, a lot of us look a little different now, but that was five, five years ago. Um, and so grateful. And the reason, another reason why we changed the name of the church is because we wanted to put our hand when it comes to uh, campuses, so we have church campus, and we had a campus in Providence. We have a we had a campus in Newport. We have a Latino campus. So we wanted to be able to say Restoration Church, and and name and the name of the city, and doing that under North Providence, the location would be a little weird. Isaiah forty three nineteen says, God says, I am doing a new thing, and God is doing a new thing in this church. I'm grateful to let you know that we are past as far as attendance past pre-COVID numbers. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And I want to brag on the, on the leadership for a moment because when, when COVID happened, I remember that first Sunday, uh, there was a breakout in East Cranston High School. And I remember, oh, this is like, I, we all thought it was the bubonic plague. Like, we're, that's it, see you in heaven kind of thing. But to see the leadership of this church just really step up and really step up and, and, and do, because we've always said the church is not about the four walls. Hello. And now we had that opportunity to really live out the fact that the church is not the four walls. The attendance, the generosity, the salvations. Oh, my gosh. Last week we had nine people saved the second service. I was blown away. And the ministries. He's doing a new thing in the church. He's doing a new thing in the Palo home. We're expecting grandbaby number four. Yeah. Pastor Kristen and Brandon, and they are having a boy. So that's very, very exciting. The Lord's been good to the Palo home. Um, our daughter, Abigail, still lives in California with her husband. She calls like, um, like four times a day. <laughs> Is that exaggerating? We love it. Yeah. But she fa like, she's FaceTiming me. I'm like, call me. But yeah, so I try to pick up as often as I can. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing a new thing in the lives of Pastor Tony and Susan Palo. It was in 2007 that we were voted in as the second pastor, uh, second pastor of Restoration Church of Rhode Island. Sec two pastors in 42 years. That's a really big deal. And, and really, it's, it's, it's un un unheard of. And by the end of this year, December 2024, will mark the end of our journey as pastors here at Restoration Church for my wife and I. Yes. 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 I know. Who's saying no? That's why we're not live streaming this service. We're recording it. And this is a really big, is a really big deal for us. Now, this is what I'm going to ask. Um, this is, and you're going to hear all of our journey. You're going to hear our story from 2019 to the present. We had one succession, pastoral succession in 2006 to 7. New people, stick around because you're going to witness another amazing, healthy, powerful, dynamic, God-inspired pastoral succession from myself to the new person. I want to make it clear. 
we, we know, like things are going so well, we're like, God, like, really now? But you understand that when the cloud moves, when the pillar of fire moves, we got to move. And, and that's what we're doing. So it's been a journey from 2019 that started. And then COVID happened. And we're like, we're not going anywhere. We're having too much fun. Um, and so the, the, this new thing is exciting, joy-filled, and it's sad because we've developed so many close relationships and friendships in this church. And in the 18 years of my pastor, we, we planted two churches We've done several uh, campuses, uh, satellite uh, campuses. Um, we've developed relationships. We started a, a school of, of, of ministry. We, we've, we've, st- we've raised leaders, a school of preaching, launched ministries. We've seen thousands of people saved, made, made disciples. But it's time to hand off the leadership baton of, of this church. And um, I want you to be mindful of the fact that this started... Um, and when we started this process, we got several different people involved, okay? So obviously the board, which is the search committee, um, my pastor, my boss, um, in 2019, I said to him, listen, I'm feeling five years, you know? So he's been with us every step of the way. Um, in fact, one of our meetings that we had with him, um, uh, he said, you know, you guys, I wish every church was like this. It's just, we know God is involved. Okay, and, and, you know, when we think about relays and races and stuff, it's not how fast you are. It's how well you hand off the baton. And I thought of stories that I had with Dave, David at the Memorial Day picnic. David, you remember? And you're, he's new. How many, year, how many months have you been coming to his church? Two months. He's telling me his whole life, and I'm listening, and he says, yeah. I've been, we've been through one pastoral transition before, and it was a mess, and we don't want to go through that again. And I'm like, <laughs> as I'm eating a hot dog. <laughs> so, folk, listen to me. I've met so many new friends, and at the last pasta with the pastor, I was like, we love you guys. Love us. We're like, oh, no, but we're leaving soon. I felt so, like, bad in my heart because... You've connected here. Stay till December and then stay another six months. And you're going to see the promised land is the promised land. We learned it. Now you're figuring out Terra, Abram, Moses, Joshua. Whoever's leading, the promised land is the promised land. The promised land is the promised land. No matter what is happening and no matter what God is doing, it's always the goal. But we have finished our assignment after 18 years. That's a long time. And we finished our assignment. And so we've involved the board, obviously, the search committee, my pastor, my district leader, um, my mentor. And then we hired a gentleman by the name of Randall Smith who has his doctorate in pastoral transitions. Who would have thought? I'm like, he's just, I guess this guy's, so we hired him, I meet with him once or twice a month to the end of the year, and then we've contracted him, contracted him six months in to uh, the next person, and I'll be explaining who that candidate is, so that that person, so the key thing about this, we know God is involved, but we still have to be diligent and good stewards of the assignment, right, we don't make a mess, and God doesn't bless a mess, and we don't take this moment lightly, we started in 2019, COVID happened, and then in 2022, we picked up the conversation, okay? Um, there's a couple, several board members here, and we had 2023, 2024, we had a plan. I had it all drafted out. I said, in 2023, this is what's going to happen. In 2024, every quarter, this is going to happen. And then in 2025, this is what's supposed to happen. So every quarter for three years, we knew what was going to happen. I'm a planner, but... It's always important that when you plan, you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and go, hold on a second, let's tweak this like that. Hopefully it's intervention and not interruption, right? And so we went, I'm going to have my wife come on up. Come on, give my wife a hand. She's part of this. Come on. Standing applause. Thank you. Because this is about her too. Is the mic on? Good, good. So, <laughs> 2019. Now, just to know, let you know how we, like, I'm more, let's go do this. My wife is like, 
hold on a second. And so in 2019, I said... Check, checks and balances. Yeah, yeah. In 2019, um, um, I said, hey, hon, i I'm feeling like five years in me. And I shared with a couple of people. I shared <coughs> it with Linda. Um, then COVID happened. And then we picked up the conversation mm -hmm. um, in 2022. So it's supposed to be a three-year plan. Okay. And it turned into a two-year plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so somebody asked me, how did it turn into a two-year plan? Thank you, Evangelo. Because, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> things, certain things were supposed to happen at the end of 2024 that happened at the beginning of 2024. Okay? So I'm like, wow, we're a year, 10 months ahead of schedule. Yeah, man. And then, and then we go to Argentina, and the Lord speaks to my heart, more like convicts my heart. And it's like, you know, if you're so sure about this, why are you sticking around for another year and 10 months? And what was it? He's like, because we want to. We like it. We're comfortable. Yeah. We love the church. Um, and we don't want to go. Right? And that felt, I was like getting convicted. Uh, that I was playing it too safe. I was making decisions safe. You know? And, and then in my mind, I was like, oh, man, I don't like this. But I wasn't saying anything to her about the possibility of leaving earlier because I was like, Holy he knew Spirit. Better. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit's a dove and gentle. Holy Spirit, you speak to her. And, and, he, and he did. And fortunately, yes, he did. And he did. I just, um, but you, there was one thing that, that uh, oh, so at the beginning, we says, okay, my mentor said there's a beginning point. But make sure the end point is adjustable based on the needs of the church, the needs of the body. Um, if things change, you don't want to make it so hard and fast. So that's what we did. We made December 2025 as the final point, but with the ability to change it based on the Lord leads. Mm -hmm. So the Lord convicted me. And uh, what we, how did he speak to you now in well, your time? It, going back to the Argentina trip, right. we, we planned to go to Argentina. And we were excited about it. And, um, and so we, I was in prayer about that trip and, you know, preparing my heart and the ministry right. and everything. And um, during that preparation time, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Susan, um, this trip is going to be the beginning of mm. a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I received mm -hmm. that, but mm -hmm. I didn't really quite know what it meant. Mm -hmm. And um, then we left on a Friday morning, but that prior, the eve of our leaving, the there was a corporate prayer here yeah, in yep, the church. Yep, Thursday night. And, the, you know, I had the ladies pray for me and everything. Right. And, you know, of course, they, anybody that knows me knows I don't like to fly. And I was getting ready to go on a 12-hour flight. And they were so praying it was, over you. They were praying over Shut me. Up, so I was happy about that. It all went well, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> she did good. <laughs> I did good. Thank you, Anthony. Um, you know, the 18 and never so mind. Okay, go. we go, yeah. uh, you know, so we're standing up here. And, and um, you know, I, I already shared this with... Um, Denise from this from right, first service. From first service. First she service. was her here first service and, and yeah. she does remember it. And they at the end of them praying for me, she came to me and she said, You know, Susan, she says, you know, I I really believe that the you know, the Lord wants me you to know mm. that this is this yeah. trip is gonna be like the beginning of a new Come beginning. On. Yeah, yeah. And I said, Denise, why would you say that? <laughs> Stop that. And um, you know, I yeah. you know, I'm so thankful and I Come on. And I'm not, this is not to put you down, but yeah. my husband is a man that hears something and then moves. And I'm somebody that hears something and I said, okay, I know that's a good idea, but let me just think about it. And so I'm so thankful that I serve, that I serve the Lord <laughs> and that I can hear his voice and that he is always so tender mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. to, you know, prepare mm -hmm. my heart and really speak to me clearly yeah. Yeah. so that I know that I can have the boldness and the right, courage right. to step up. Yeah, with I, I love what you said. It's like the Lord's, then the Lord will speak right been, into you. Let me your, just say it, this. The Lord will speak right into your personality. He's so been doing to that to me. Yeah, you, right? he speaks to us differently, but he's been doing this for me yeah. since 1992. Come on now. Praise we were God. married in 1992. Since 1992, he's been doing this for me. Yeah. And so, like, you're gonna need I mean, it's been, you know, <laughs> and thank God, you know, thank yeah, God, yeah. because, you know, it's helped us along the way. Yeah. So anytime there's a change in, in, in uh, leadership of the church, anytime there's a change in the pastor, um, we're still in Assemblies of God Church. I know there was a big thing when we changed our name from North Province Assembly to Restoration Church. People were like, you see, he got kicked out of the Assemblies of God because he was dancing at that wedding. So we kicked him out. 
True story. I was like, listen, I'm, you know, whatever. Just in case anybody in the Somebody posted a picture of me, and it happened. And then the it's rumors okay started. It's okay to dance with your wife. And the rumors started in Florida. And Melissa's like, should I call him and tell him to stop? I'm like, no, this is too great. I love this. We have, we, we have um, some checks and balances in place when it comes to Constitution and bylaws. There's a change in pastoral leadership. Our bylaws calls on the church board. This is how we work. And the church board, the search committee now has a responsibility um, to present our own candidate. So we're not a church that's uh, led by a bishop. We're a, um, a congregational church, which means the, the candidate that we present has to be voted on by the church membership um, at the end of July. So the candidate that we are presenting to be voted on by the membership of this church is Jason Fuentes. So, yes, this is our nominee. This is our candidate. Oh, that, that's our, and that's and this, nice is, this is a great picture, isn't it? And this is, this is, we went Jason sailing. is we went my together. student back in 2003. He's my candidate, He's somebody that we've been working with for a long time. And, uh, and there's going to be a journey to this. And what was important, I love this. I'm looking at Leah. Where do we get our children's director from in-house? Where do we get our youth pastor from? In-house. Where do we get our associate pastor from? In-house. Where do we get our graphics? Well, she's been in-house before there was a house. <laughs> Where are we getting the next senior pastor from? In-house. He's coming back home. He and his wife and his family, and we are grateful. He worked for me back in 2004 as a student at North Point Bible College, graduated, got married, um, started attending this church, and, uh, and, and we were, we, this sounds familiar. This will sound familiar to a lot of you guys. He wanted to get involved in ministry, right, Chuck? And we're like, be an usher. <laughs> and he was a good he student. He did that really well. And he did it really well. And then he became the head usher. And he became the head usher. He did that really well. And, and then he, they felt the call to missions. And from this church, he did that from 2008 became to 2014. Became uh, men's pastor. Men's pastor. Yep. Yeah, from 2018, that's right. Mm -hmm. to, from 2008 to 2014, he became the men's pastor. And, um, um, and then he was launched from this church, he and his family, to uh, the country of Indonesia. He's coming back home. So the church board is unanimous in our decision and our belief that Jason is the next pastor. He's, can I just say, he's my pick. He's my pick. And in fact, one of the things, <laughs> and one of the things that happened because remember, God changed me from December 2025 to 2024, and then he changed Susan's from 2025 to 2024. And then when we got together with oh, them, yeah. they had their story and their dream. Yes, yes. When we were at that restaurant. Yes. And, and it was like, okay, God, thank you. God never comes to us to confuse us. We were eating at the little roadie hen. And he's providence. And they're sharing their story, and, and we're like, sharing our story, and all of a sudden the four of us place. are crying. Uh, this is a significant moment. Yes. This, this is it. Get, say your spiel there. We came to this church. Yeah, <laughs> so. <messing> with you. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, so um, uh, December 28th of this year will be our last Sunday here. Oh, man. And that will make on, 18 so. years. So, it's, it's, you know, it's really yeah. something um, to think about. It. You know, Kristen yeah. was just, when we came 13, in 2007, 14. Kristen was just turned, just turned 13. Danny was 10 going on 11. Abby started kindergarten here, and um, you know, and Zoe and Samantha they weren't even, even they weren't yet. even conceived yet. Nope. Yeah. Women and infants. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "My son-in-law said TMI." <laughs> it is what it is, people. It is what it is. Um, but you know, I, I wanted to take the moment to just say, really, thank you. You know, thank you for loving my family. That's thank good. you for loving my children. Thank you for yeah. accepting them and. And Some all the new people that we added to our family, we added yep. two son-in-laws, a, a daughter-in-law, three granddaughters, yeah. and the new son, uh, yeah, grandson to come. Along, yeah. And so, um, you know, mm -hmm. I remember that time being a really big deal for us to come mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. and, but we knew that, it was the, that the Lord was in it. Mm -hmm. And so we did it. And here we find ourselves in another yeah, place of transition. Crazy, you know. And it's a really big deal again for come us. Come on, come on. But I want you to know that we yeah. know with no shadow of a doubt that mm -hmm. there's, the Lord is in it. Yeah. Um, it's important to note that Kristen and Brandon and Zoe and Sam will be staying. That's important, yep. Yeah, she's going to continue to be the youth pastor here, and Brandon's going to continue to do the music, and 
They're going to do with all their ministry. Zoe will have Zoe, her driver's license. Zoe will, Zoe will have her driver's license soon. She's Where's gonna, Joey? Zoe. <laughs> so, and she'll be driving. Then she'll be able to come and go. Um, yeah. I want to say when this first, when he said, when my husband first told me that we were moving up the timeline, I got a little bit nervous. Yeah, you know? yeah. I spent yeah. a lot, and I was, help, I was yeah. thankful that I had my mom to talk to. And, yeah. you know, she said, you know, Susan, the Lord gave you an assignment back in 2007 That's for this body. That's a good word. And you guys did the assignment well. Yeah. And now the Lord has given you a new assignment. That's good. And he's going to help you to do that assignment, the new assignment well as also. Word. And so yeah. um, through the years, I'm going to just read yeah. what I have because I took yeah. the time to write it. Through the years, we have come to know so many of you, not yeah. just as acquaintances, but as friends and family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you. Thank you for loving us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for loving our children, Kristen, Danny, and Abigail. Thank you for warmly, warmingly mm -hmm. welcoming the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for all your prayers and support. Thank you for making us look good mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. You've made us look good because everywhere we go, people are like, that's a great church. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. come on. It, yeah. And they, they think it's because of us, so that Very makes nice. us look good. Um, thank you for trusting us with your secrets Yo. and your concerns and your trials and your disappointments. We know a lot of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know, this is very important, right? That your, se we, we, our, your secrets will go to, with us to the grave. Truth. You know, I, I said I shared this at the first service. You know, it's funny how I have the capability of like having this part of my brain oh where my gosh. I can just hold on to people's things. You know, it's, it's okay. a miracle we could even function. But it's but it's <laughs> you know, the, I guess the Lord gives you what you, you need. Just, you know? This is what makes it a safe place. Be a good person to keep a secret. Yeah, I'm a good person because to because let me just say, even though I know some stuff, I also know the victory that came on the other end of it. And, you know, that's all, that's help us all to be better yeah, people. Um, you entrusted us with this. Yes. We've laughed together and yeah. cried together. Yeah, we've, had, we've had sorrow. Mm -hmm. We felt pain, mm -hmm. loss. But we also had a lot of moments of victory. Praise together God. we've grown. Yeah. We've become overcomers. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe that in the last 18 years I've become overcomer. an overcomer. Absolutely. And I think that's due to the fact Praise that I've God. lived life with you guys. Part of this church. Come on. I mentioned earlier to some of you how proud mm -hmm. I am of my mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. He's a man that hears from God, and he's a man that has courage to walk in the way that the Lord leads him. And that's not an easy thing to do. Sometimes he follows the leading of the Spirit, even when other people, you know, tell him different. And he doesn't care. He just does it. And that's a man of courage. Um, he's a man that practices what he preaches. I, get, I have a front row seat, and I can tell you that he's a man of his word, and he's a man of character. And so... Thank I you, am sweetie. honored to do life Appreciate with you, it. honey. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. For me personally, my faith has grown here, and that's due to part being uh, a, a part of your stories. Yeah, absolutely. And, how, and seeing how good the Lord is and what the Lord has done. Yeah. Uh, we truly are a church of restoration. Come on. You know, the name came because that's who we were. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. Um, I'm so thankful that we serve a God that sees us, that knows us, mm -hmm. that has compassion mm -hmm. on us. We serve a God of mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. We serve a God that wants the best for us. Mm -hmm. um, we serve a God that reminds mm -hmm. us every day that we are awesome spirit beings of magnificent worth created in his image. <laughs> God reminds us that there's work to be done and that we are his instruments. There is work to be done, and we are his instrument. It's yeah, not about yeah. the church. It's about the kingdom. Come on. Come on. Jesus is everything that yeah. we need to accomplish the assignment right. that he lays before us, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. And you might be surprised to know that um, we really don't want to leave, yeah, even no, right no, now. No, no. It just, yep, yep. But at the same time, there's no doubt in our minds <laughs> that the Lord mm -hmm. has placed another yeah. assignment on us. Right. And that assignment goes before us. And mm -hmm. just as we strive to complete the work that the Lord has given us mm -hmm. over these last years, we look forward to what the Lord has for us next. And we're excited to see how the Lord will yes. use us, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really we exciting. Are. Is we it an adventure? Very, very excited. Yeah. His faithfulness and provision never cease to amaze yeah. me. People that know me have heard me say, I love new beginnings, but I dislike goodbyes. Mm -hmm. And it's true. 
um, recently I, I, I was led to a scripture, Ecclesiastes 7, 8, which says, better is the end of something than its beginning. That's good. And the conclusion of something offers a great deal, don't you think? That's good. You know? Come on. Things like experience, insight, growth, fruit, relationships, wisdom, mm. treasured mm. memories. Mm. So again, thank you. Mm. Thank you for actively participating in the kingdom work with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being steadfast and faithful. Thank you for allowing God mm. to use our church family to further his kingdom. We will ever... We will Yay. forever and ever hold you in our hearts, and I, I, I know yeah. that without a doubt. You know, there's a reason why the Lord yeah. allowed us to know you. There's yeah. a reason why the Lord allowed it's us fun. to uh, become a family. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so I mm -hmm. say thank you. And once again, we love you. Yay. Good job. Good job, honey. Good job. Just Yay. Yeah, this is beautiful. Our, our, you may be, be asking, what will, will we be doing next? Um, a lot. We know that a we're going to be on the road coaching marriages. I'll be working with churches and pastors that are, they're pulling at me now, and I'm like, wait till next year, <laughs> you know, so I'll be serving in, in the area of consulting. Um, we'll be saying yes to a lot of stuff as long as there's a kingdom connection attached to it. If you see me working at Home Depot for 10 hours a week, <laughs> it's because I want to do it. It's that people that, people don't realize that is a dream of his. He said, <laughs> I'm like, he how said, much they pay you here? Mm. It's funny, know. but true. With the orange, I think, right? The orange thing. The discount. Come see me. Come see me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it just to make an impact. God has given us a platform where we're, we'll be traveling. Um, and tra when we travel currently, we represented the kingdom and we represented restoration. And we loved, we loved, we loved what we do. There's a lot of process, but God will take us further than what we're used to going. Yeah. And I, I look I, at people, yeah. get, what you say? We can't even fathom what the Lord has Absolutely, for us. Yeah. Like it, we have our thoughts, ideas, our plans. Uh, right, but, but God exceeds that. Yeah, he always has. Always. And, he, I, and so like when I say it's exciting to see what the Lord's going to do for us and through What'd us. What you say to Zoe? Don't say, oh, yeah, don't yeah. say it's scary, Just say, say it's exciting. It's ex yeah. Because it, it, it feels is the exciting. same. It feels the yeah. same, but it has two different outcomes. But I was looking at, um, Chuck Downs, Reverend Chuck Downs, when he first came, it was Pastor Jason that mentored him. Mm -hmm. And when Angel first came to this church, and he says, I've been in this for a long time. I want to be involved in ministry. And what did Pastor Jason say? Usher first. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put you as usher first. So he's coming home. Now, what the process will look like for the because we're here until the end of December. So what the process will look like. And I'm so proud to be, I'm so blessed to be able to brag on God's mantle that he's placed on this church when it comes to succession. Because remember, it's not how fast you run, it's how quick, how, how well you pass the baton. And even if you're average or below average, passing the baton well will, will make get a difference. You, will yes. make a huge difference. And I'm able to brag on the mantle that God has placed on this church. So for the next several months, you're going to hear Pastor Jason uh, speak at the men's and his wife at the women's events. Um, he'll be speaking his, his way in different small groups and stuff like that. Um, and beginning in October, you will witness, I want you to listen, because the staff and the leadership know this. But if you're new to this church, beginning in October, you will see him and I working together, the pastor-elect and the um, outgoing pastor, working together to make sure that you reach the promised land. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. For his glory and for his honor. And, the, and because we love you. And because we love you. And we want to make sure that you reach the promised land. And I don't know if you've noticed how kind of things uh, roll around here for the folks who are new. It's like, I'm, you know, I may be the leader, but I build a team of people. I, I want to be, I, we don't want to be in a room. What do we say? Where we're the smartest one in the room. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in a room where you're the smartest room, you're the smartest person, change rooms. 
Surround yourself with people that can preach better than you, prophesy better than you, teach better than you, uh, administrate better than you. And then raise somebody else up in that room that to be, you, in take your place. Yeah. In house. So the key thing, the key thing with us now, I think we said it first service because it, we take it for granted. In most churches, they need a senior pastor and they'll throw the keys to the leader, leader to, the, to the district superintendent. All right, I'm gone. Here's the keys. Yeah, that's, Send somebody over. Sadly, that's how it We've seen it done. And for then you'll get many, 100 many resumes. In, in the assemblies of God. <laughs> that you have to go through. And then the church is like stuck trying to find the man that the Lord has for them. So it's, a, it's an honor for us to, to be able to, to see be part this of this happen. process. It's and it's a blessing amazing. for you guys, amazing. I feel. Amazing. It really is an honor and a privilege. God will always push you. This is one gentleman in the Old Testament that I'm intrigued with his story when it comes to feeling the weightiness of somebody's excuses. I don't know if you ever use an excuse. It's Moses. Moses in Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 says, um, what if they don't believe me? Or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to you. And that phrase, what if, is a two words. If you just said what if, those two words characterize fear. But what if... What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this? Well, what if purple unicorns exist? I don't know. We, we keep living by what ifs. And God is giving him a command. God is giving him instruction. And then God proves to him with a supernatural miracle by turning the staff into a serpent. And then Moses in verse 10 still says, pardon your soul. Oh, so polite. Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never. This is when you look at this in the, in the Hebrew is loaded with hyperbole, a lot of exaggeration. I have never been eloquent, neither in my past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Basically, we're saying every time I speak, my tongue swells up. You ever see people who are really nervous speaking for the first time and they have a huge bottled water and they're like, because what happens when you get nervous? Your tongue swells up. And then he finally says in verse 13, just don't send me. So for it, first he says, what if? Then he says, I've never spoken. Please don't give me the microphone. I don't like being and in public. then he says, send somebody else. Then he says, send somebody else. Yeah. All of this now does not match the scripture in Acts chapter 7, which is a real conflict that says Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in and... Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, because people don't realize that he was, raised, he was raised in the palace. He had the best of everything. He went to Egyptian Egypt University. <laughs> now, they say, I was reading a commentary. One, one commentator, one biblical commentary said, if he were alive today, he would have his Ph.D. in public speaking. So he's got a Ph.D. in public speaking, and he says, I'm not eloquent. But yet he got a degree in the best of the best uh, school system. <laughs> of the time. Of the time. In Egypt. It doesn't match. And then I began thinking about when God calls you and you have all these degrees on your wall. So if you have a degree in public speaking, God's going to call you. Yeah, God's going to use that degree. Yeah, he will. He will exceed and ask more from you than that degree trained you for. This is why I don't have any degrees on my walls because I'm like, Lord, this is all the Holy Spirit, <laughs> you know? He doesn't. And, and so the first 40 years, <laughs> I do have a high school diploma. <laughs> he has a lot of degrees. And, he just doesn't do. have them on the wall. So, oh, so talk about my high school diploma. A couple of weeks ago, um, I talked about my book, right? I was like, oh, no, no. And, and I got vulnerable with you and got weepy with you. He's writing a book now. Yeah. <laughs> so that Monday... My mom calls me. Did you hear that noise? That was me. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, oh. I thought it was this like something crashing into the streaming. building. Didn't, some, didn't you think something crashed into the building? Oh, just so me. So my mom calls me. My mom calls me on Monday. And she goes, I listened to your sermon. Oh, I love you so much. You're so good. She said, I, I don't know if you remember this, but you dropped out of kindergarten. True story. She says, on the third day, you came home and you said, this is too hard. I quit. And you want to know something? He never went back. 
My mom kept me home for another year. His first time in school was first grade. He never I'm did like, kindergarten. I'm like, mom, why didn't you, why didn't you tell me that 18 years ago? That would have been good material. My past is a kindergarten dropout. <laughs> <laughs> title of the book. Mrs. Fisher. That would be a good title. <laughs> so Moses dropout. now, now let's check this the out. Saw girl, Mrs. Fisher. <laughs> I don't know where she is. She's, That's a good I don't know title. where she is. She might be in heaven. I'm gonna now. look her up one day. God bless her soul. <laughs> so the first 40 years for Moses, he was in Egypt. His brain was trained. Mm. The second 40 years, he was in the. He was just wandering in the wilderness, in the desert. desert, doing desert. his own thing. Yep. And so, what happened while he was wandering and doing his own thing? He forgot who he was. Yep. He forgot yep. who he was. Yep. He forgot who God created him to be. Yep. And in the, how that happened, because the first 40 years, his brain was trained. His second 40 years, his heart was prepared. Mm. And so anytime we look at Jesus, couldn't speak. we look at Paul or Saul or Paul, we look at David, we look at all these men that before they got released to do something, they went into the desert. I think that desert experience is designed for you to come to the end of yourself. Mm. And then what happened with Moses, with his PhD in public speaking on the wall, he was like, um, I stutter. But you have a degree. But God will always ask you to do more than what that degree trained you for. This is, and so Moses really was an eloquent stutterer. Mm. And be careful. Don't disqualify yourself because the more you disqualify yourself, the more that qualifies you for God to use you. This is it. So our process has been for the last couple of years, God, now? I don't know, God. Things are going so well. Yeah. I don't know, God. The people, we had 85 at the last pastor with the pastor. God's not listening to any of that. Even this morning, I was a little nervous because now I it's was. like real because we we're saying now it we're out announcing loud. It. I know. We, we're announcing you it. Know? And we're singing it out loud. Yeah. And, and yeah, when you say it out loud, now it's like this is real. You know, this is real. We, and, and like, so no said, turning back. No, no turning, turning back. back. You said, we don't want to leave. And that is true mm -hmm. because of the relationships and the faces that we have connected with you. New and folks, the fun. David, back to the Memorial Day picnic. <laughs> Stay for seven months. You're going to witness. Stay for another six months. You're going to witness a transition, a succession that a book can be written on for the glory of God. For the glory of God. You know why? That'd be another good book. You, yeah. Just keep writing books. <laughs> the promised land. See, the promised land is too, too much at stake going on here. You know? So that's why my wife and I, October, November, December, you're going to see a transition happen. And you're going to see us step back, and you're going to see Pastor Jason step up for his glory. This is not about our, per this is not personality driven. It's not even about gifts or charisma. This is about, this is about him here. Yes. So you're going to see, I guarantee yes. you, you're going to see a healthy succession. That doesn't Do have not to be any kind of nonsense. No, if you're, no drama. It, it, because our church, we believe in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And Absolutely. if we believe that the Lord is leading us this way, Come then on. there's no nonsense. Absolutely. And, 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 that's, and, and that's all to the, Very that's simple. All to the glory of God and his work in our, in our lives. That's right. The, we, we are, this is a significant moment. We're praying for you. We ask that you pray for us. Yes. And the way this, please, the, the way this, because you want to know something, we know you pray for us because we feel it all the time. We pray for you. Yeah. And um, the way this church works, this is not a ministry that rests just on us. That's right. Right? Jesus at 12, he was close to three. And when he ministered to the 5,000, he connected to the 12 to reach the masses. And then he said, I'm stepping back. Greater works shall you do. Amen. So where we go, you That's cannot right. follow us. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Trust in the Lord, first of all, and trust the system that he has placed on our care, on our mantle, and uh, your future is bright. And keep making us proud. Bright. Yes. Your future is bright. We love you. Yes. I think we've answered most of the questions, especially from the leadership. 
as far as what it's going to look like from now until the end of the year. You'll hear Pastor Jason speak several times um, before there's a vote. But you know what? The really, this is a benefit now of being part of a community, being part of a small group. I got so many questions. If you're part of a small group, this is where you could say, man, I love Pastor Jason, but man, we're going to miss Susan and Pastor Tony. This is where you get to process in healthy ways your emotions and feelings and talk about the will of God and talk about the plan of God. This is the benefit when you're connected to community. That's right. You can process your emotions. So we're going to be around. We're going to be around. Things are going to start. And it's okay and every to miss week. us and love them at the same time. Absolutely. Every week now, this is what we pledged. Every week you're going to hear some communication regarding the transition. Uh, our goal is to over-communicate this process with you, to That's let you right. know where we're at, to let you know where Pastor Jason and Angie at, and uh, where we're at as a church. So you'll be hearing from my pastor towards the end of the year, my leader, and uh, from several others as well that were part of this process. So <coughs> oh. I want to come down. I'll repeat what I said in the first service, but I'll, I'll also share something else. Uh, I remember when you guys came on a Saturday night, and uh, your message was on the woman with the issue of blood. It was April, a message on April, faith. April it was Palm Sunday, so we had a Saturday night service, yeah. 2006. And, um, and I was just thinking about uh, the songs that, that, that they sang this morning really dealt with faith. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. your first message here mm -hmm. hey, revolved hey. around wow. faith. And, wow, um, and now you guys are taking a step of faith. You're really practicing what yeah. you've preached from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, I, I was thinking of uh, how, you, how you would say it, Sue, like, <laughs> the Lord would speak to Pastor Tony, and he's like, right, let's go. So it's almost like Peter just, like, just jumping out of the board. You were one of the other disciples, like, let me just figure this thing out, God. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> but, but it's, yeah. <laughs> Come a little closer, Lord. <laughs> but it really, it really shows how God uniquely, um, yeah, you know, puts you guys amen, together, amen. and um, you're able to, to really walk out the, the, the life of faith mm -hmm. as a true example for us. And then what I said in the first service, uh, I talked about how, um, how you know, we always, you always say we're an equipping church and mm -hmm. you want to equip people and launch them out. And a couple of weeks ago, like the Lord had shared a word with me, a, a message you were preaching, and it was like you, you're practicing yeah, what amen. you preach. And right. even with this equipping, mm -hmm. it's like as scary as it is, yeah, you've always told gosh. us we're going to equip you and send you out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But literally, all the lives here yeah, right. equipped you for what yeah. God yeah. is going right. um, yeah. to use good. doing your life. And so um, That's a good you guys word. have always practiced, you know, what yeah. you preach. And, and you've displayed just the last thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, there's also a thing about uh, restoration. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just a word mm -hmm. for you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, even in my life, like, mm -hmm. you displayed yeah. the true picture mm -hmm. of the grace of God, and we're going to restore things. Come on. We're not going to let the enemy rob anything. You, and um, and you, I know Jesus. people can testify Amen. to that from wall to Amen. wall, that, that no matter what it was, how connected it was, it's like, no, yeah. this is restoration, Jesus. and we're going to see Amen. God get the Amen. glory. So we're excited. Come on. Yeah. We're excited thank for you, you guys. Thank you, and, um, Anthony. Let's just pray real quick. Come on. You, know, you, you said something, Pastor Anthony, that, that we thought we had this conversation we started these ministries. We started an LLC. It, we did it because our experience here. Like if we were anywhere else, like we were crit. You, your lives equipped us. Yeah. We were like, how am I going to handle this? And then when we figured it out, we're like, all right, God, we'll do this, you know. And so you're not losing us. You're launching us. We're not stepping down. We're stepping out. So appreciate now that. Not, now is your time. Yeah, now is your time to shine. We love you. We appreciate you. Stick around. David. Oh. David is my personal liaison. Do you have any questions? Talk to David. David, man. Like, and I see all these new faces, and we're like, oh, man. Like, there's some, just like, I'm like, oh. Stick around. Stick around because you're going to see God work. And you're going to see the goal is the same. The vision is the same. So, Pastor Anthony, I thank you. Right, There's enough time for that. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for the Jesus. gift that you've given us for so many years of Pastor Tony and First Lady Sue. Lord, they've been an amazing gift, God. 
Lord, they've been a blessing to this house, Lord. Father, you've given him a, a heart of a shepherd. He's gone home many days smelling like sheep <laughs> because he rubs shoulders with us. And you've given Sister Sue just a heart of a mother, not just for her kids, but for each and every one of us. She mothered us back to life. Lord, we thank you for their kids and their family. We thank you that they're still going to be here, Lord. And we were able to see them grow into the men and women of God that you've shaped them and formed them to be. But Lord, as Pastor Tony and Susan step out of the boat and they walk on water, knowing that you're calling them into deeper water, they have no idea what it looks like. But the one thing they know is that they can see your face in your hand. And Lord, I pray for an anointing over this transition. Yes, yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, that even with uh, Pastor Jason and, and Angie, Lord, that as they transition even from Indonesia back to the United States, Lord, that in of itself can be just nerve-wracking. But give them the same faith you've given Pastor Tony and Sue to step out of the boat. And Father, we thank you for 40 something years of Come on. And two smooth transitions yes. from Pastor Manzo to Pastor Tony. Yes. Yes. And we're believing from Pastor Tony to Pastor Jason. Come on. And Father, we thank you that you've always had your hand on this church and you do all things well. Yes, you do. We pray Praise all this God. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on now. And we're going to say this now for seven more months. You're an awesome spirit being of magnificent worth created in the image of God. Sorry. And your future is bright. And don't mess up.